Hurtmas video. If you're new here, hi, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And every year for the month of December, we celebrate Hurtmas on my channel. Today's video is a very exciting one and one that I've been waiting to make for quite a while. So today's video, I am going to be gifting you guys with a video introducing some animals you have not met yet. Some of these animals I've had for a couple months, some of these I've had for a year or over a year. So, how's that for keeping a secret? Normally I don't keep secrets very well, but one of these animals I've had for over a year and we'll talk about why. Let's hop into the video and meet these animals. Hi everyone, a little note from present day Zoe who is gonna be editing this video soon. I wanted to promote an event super quickly before we get into the video. So, if you're a Christmas fanatic like me and your reptile community, you might already know about this event, but if you don't, check out the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. This event is put on by Wally from Supreme Gecko. It is a fantastic event. I believe this is the 11th year doing it. This is my first year fully like being immersed in it. Last year I tried to follow it a little bit, but it was just so crazy that I ended up missing a lot of the information and the live streams. This year I'm making it a priority to be more involved in it and get to experience it. And so far it has been so much fun. So what are the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas? Essentially it is a community event for the reptile community, for people to come together and to show our appreciation for different vendors and breeders who so kindly donate prizes and gifts to the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas. There are gifts ranging from $500 to $2,400. Like there's such a wide range of gifts. Like, the gifts are just incredible. And they're not all live animal gifts. There are some things that are like photography, there's jewelry, there's mugs, there's shirts, hoodies, supplies on top of isopods, roaches, geckos, um, gift certificates for certain breeders. So it's a really great event that gives back to the reptile community. But supporting the event is another great way to say thank you to the vendors who get involved in this event every year. So as I'm filming this, we're getting ready for night four of gifts, but there's plenty more to go. So be sure to check out Supreme Gecko or the 12 Supreme Days of Christmas on Facebook and on YouTube. Check out those live streams and those videos so that you know how to enter to win certain gifts. And it's just a great time, a lot of people have a lot of fun with it. It's just a fun community event to be able to come together with others in the Christmas spirit. So thank you to Wally and his family for putting this on every year for the reptile community and to all the vendors and breeders who contribute to the gifts every year. As a community, we appreciate you all. So with that being said, let's hop back into the video. So we're gonna hop in, we're gonna introduce you to these animals. There are three animals. We have a gecko and two snakes. If you follow me on other platforms, you already know about some of these, but they have not been introduced here on YouTube and they haven't really had a formal introduction. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll start with the gecko and move on to the snakes. So this is Willow. Willow is an African fat tail gecko from a good friend of mine who is looking to downsize her collection. And Willow here is very sweet. She said she'd make a perfect education animal. She is super sweet, great with handling, and come spring she'll be joining us for programs. And I feel so grateful that I have been trusted with her. She is the sweetest little thing. Like, look at that little face. Just look at that little face. She is so cute. She's adorable. And I love her so much. And she'll make a great education animal. So I'm gonna go put Willow away and we'll meet the next animals. There, that lighting's a little better. It was kind of weird. So the next animal is right here. This is a, another ball python. This one also came from a friend of mine. This one was actually a little more local though. This one it came from my brother's friend who is our pet sitter. If we go away for a long time and like my whole family's gone and my boyfriend's gone, then he's the one that we bring in because he had reptiles, so he's good for watching my animals. And everyone can handle watching a dog and a cat. 
So as far as watching my animals go, he was our pet sitter. Well, he has since gone on to do some other things. Felt he didn't quite have the time to spend with her as much as he needed. So he asked me if I knew of anybody and you know, knowing us launching this and that I am going to be incorporating some handling into my programs. I needed more animals that I felt okay with people handling. And Snicket is one of them, Kahlua is another. My ball pythons are great with handling and some of the animals I allow people to interact with at my programs. And Snicket especially is fantastic because he's a smaller size. And so that's where this guy comes in. He's another great smaller ball python that I can let people interact with and handle. Yeah, so very pretty. Um, we are working on getting his weight up a little. He could stand to gain some weight, so we're working on that, but he's been doing fantastic. He's already handling much better than when I brought him here. When I brought him here, he was a little hissy, a little puffy. Um, and as you can see, he's doing totally fantastic now. He doesn't have a name. Um, when he brought him to me, he actually thought he was a female, but based on this size, I'm going to say that he is a male. Um, so if you have any name suggestions, I have Snicket and Kahlua so far. So now he needs a name as well. So if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments below. Let me know. And with that being said, we're gonna move on to the last animal. So another clip from video editing Zoe here, hi. Um, I realized earlier today when I was thinking about editing this video, that there's someone that got left out of this video who probably should have been in it, and that is Reptar. The reason he wasn't originally in it was because he's not a secret. Like, if you follow me on Instagram and TikTok, you already know about Reptar, but he hasn't been introduced on the channel, so he technically qualifies for this video. Since he's never actually been on the channel, let me give you a little rundown. So, Reptar was not an animal that I bought. He was not an animal that was intended for me to have. Um, Reptar was a animal at the nature center. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may remember a couple years ago when I went and picked up Reptar for the nature center. What we were looking for was a program animal that people could interact with and touch because we have native species and we're technically not allowed to let people touch the native species. So we wanted a fun animal that people could interact with. Against my better judgment, I allowed us to get an Aki monitor. My coworker had heard of Aki's and wanted an Aki, and I thought they were pretty fun and cool, so I agreed to it. In the end, it was just determined that an Aki was just not the right fit for our facility and for our staff. I made a pretty long post about this on Instagram when I announced that he would be coming home with me. Um, but yes, essentially, he was just not a great fit for us at the Nature Center. And so Billy and I agreed to take him in here. And honestly, he does so well here. Like I could not do this at the nature center. I tried to handle him and I tried to work with him. And I was the only one that really could or did. And he was, we gave up hope he would be a program animal. I mean, you're looking at him now and you're probably thinking, why did he have to leave? Cause he was not like this at all. He was difficult to handle. He would not hang out with you. He had no desire. He was just miserable. But within literally 48 hours of coming here, he was sitting on Billy's shoulder. He was just exploring. He's a completely different lizard now. So I do wanna say, if you've ever considered rehoming an animal because it's not the right fit for you, that is totally okay. You have to do what's best for you and the animal. But Reptar's just proof that sometimes Things are just not a good fit, and you have to find the good fit. Where the good fit for Reptar? The Nature Center just wasn't. The location, where his enclosure was, the people, the care he was receiving, it just wasn't the right fit. Immediately after coming here, he com became a completely different lizard. He rides around in Billy's hoods of his sweatshirt. We'll just sit in the hood. I could not walk around with Reptar on my shoulder at the nature center because he would immediately try to run away. He would not sit with you. I could not do this. He would be gone. I mean, he is trying to leave right now, but he's much calmer now. Like I can pick him up. He can get to my shoulder and I can pick him up. I couldn't do that at the nature center. I would not be hands off with him at the nature center because I could not trust him to not just disappear and run away. Completely different lizard now. I love the monitor personality. He makes me want more monitors, honestly. They're just so cool and so intelligent. And honestly, he's been smelling like maple syrup lately. We're not sure why, but he smells like maple. All right, this last animal is the one that I've had for just over a year. And I will tell you why 
I haven't talked about her, um, but she has been featured on social media. She came to plenty of programs this year. She's been a fantastic program animal, and I'm very excited to show her to you guys. I did tell you in my dubiaroach.com enclosure review video that I would show you the enclosure she's in when I introduce her to you. It's not finished being set up yet because I'm still waiting on substrate to get here, but for the sake of saying I did, here's the enclosure. It is the four by two by one dubiaroach.com enclosure. Let me um, just get up on my step stool here. So we've got our hide, water, hide, can't really see that. Hide, <laughs> fake plants. I threw in some leaf litter because this is a burrowing species um, to give her something to like burrow under a little bit. But we are waiting on substrate to get here. But let's pull her out and meet her. So this right here is a voodoo. Voodoo is my Calabar burrowing python. I don't know her age. She was wild caught. She was her home to me from the guy I actually get my frozen rodents from. He needed to clear some space and so he was rehoming her. Now the reason I haven't showed her, when she was being rehomed she was on live rodents and I took her under the assumption that I would attempt to convert her to frozen thawed and if she didn't switch over it might come down to me having to rehome her. Thankfully she switched over no problem. She pretty effortlessly switched over to frozen thawed and so she started coming to programs. She's been a great program animal. If you don't know much about the Calabar burrowing python, they're essentially like a bigger Kenyan sand boa mixed with a ball python. So you know she's kind of like balled up right now. Um, this is what they do similar to a ball python, um, but they also are fossorial like a sand boa and live underground mainly. However, however, just like the sand boa, these guys do like to climb. So people don't really think about it because they're a fossorial species, but she will climb. Another fun fact about these guys is their nickname is the poop snake. Can you guess why? And this is one of the reasons why she has been a fantastic program animal and people love her. Exhibit A. Uh, story time, my sister was walking around with her at the Halloween event, was standing by the table, and I heard a woman go, is that girl holding a pile of poop? No joke, is that girl holding a pile of poop? So, the name fits. In fact, most of the time you won't even hear people calling them Calabar burrowing pythons or boas since they're technically a boa. You'll hear them called poop snakes. So if you ever hear someone say poop snake, they're talking about this right here. I don't wanna to give too much away. We'll do a whole separate video um, in the future on voodoo and Calabar burrowing pythons. Totally underrated species. And I'd love to do a whole video just talking about them. So I don't want to say too much in this video, but I wanted to introduce you to the her so that you know she exists. This is Voodoo, my poop snake. I love her to death. Okay, so those are all of my new animals that you guys have not met yet. So they're not really new to me. They've been around a while, but they're new to the channel. So now there's no more secrets. You guys officially, once again, know about all of the animals in my possession that I own. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on more Hurt Miss Fun. Be sure to follow me on Instagram because I plan on doing lots of giveaways this time around. And if you want some Hurt Miss merch, go ahead to the link in my bio where it says my merch and grab yourself some Hurt Miss merch. There is this year's designs as well as the last three years of designs. Whew. All right, thank you guys for watching. We will see you for the next Hurt Miss video. Bye.